Welcome to Surgery Squad's virtual laparoscopic RNY gastric bypass surgery. I'm Dr. Jeff, and I'll be your guide for this procedure. Are you ready? Let's scrub in. Gastric bypass surgery is designed to assist an obese patient in weight control. In this operation, we'll create a very small stomach pouch from the existing stomach. We'll then attach the reduced section of the stomach to the small intestine. There are several common types of gastric bypass surgeries. We've recommended laparoscopic RNY gastric bypass surgery for our patient. The procedure will usually take two hours to perform, but with skills like mine and the magic of the Internet, I bet we can whip this stomach into shape in about mm, five minutes. Our patient has been prepared for the procedure with a mild sedative, and now the anesthesiologist places a mask over her nose and mouth, and she'll drift off into dreamland. From here, we'll place an endotracheal tube down the patient's throat. You're up. See if you can get the tube into place. Great work. This tube is then connected to a respirator. The patient is ready to go. Now we can begin our laparoscopic procedure. The first thing we'll do is make six half-inch incisions in the abdomen. Slide the scalpel in where I have marked to make the incisions. Be careful, these are small incisions. Don't get carried away. Nice technique. You must have an excellent teacher. Oh, wait, that's me. Next, we'll place a device called a trocar into each incision. These devices allow us to easily slide the instruments into the abdomen. Some of the instruments we'll use include a light and a camera, so we can see what we're doing on a video monitor, as well as the surgical instruments, such as the stapler. Now, to give us plenty of room to work, we fill the abdomen with carbon dioxide. Let's face it, with the newbie helping out, we'll need all the room we can get. Time to start the gastric bypass. We'll use this monitor here to see our work. In RNY gastric bypass, we eliminate up to 90% of the stomach by making the patient's stomach the size of an egg. We do this by first placing a line of staples that separate the smaller new stomach from the whole old one. Then we sew along the staple line to make sure there are no leaks. As the patient heals, scar tissue will form to create a permanent separation. Click the stapler where indicated to create the new stomach pouch. We'll now separate the small intestine from the old stomach, about two feet down. The lower part of the intestine will be connected to the new, smaller stomach with a half-inch opening between the stomach and the intestine. It's kind of like rerouting traffic on the 405. Use the electrocautery device to create a half-inch opening where indicated in the new stomach pouch. Now, drag the loose end of the intestine to the new stomach pouch to attach it. I'll add some sutures to hold it all in place. Because we need the secretions from the old stomach to assist in digestion, it gets reattached to the small intestine several feet below the new stomach. This part takes some guts. I need you to drag the free end of intestine attached to the old stomach over to the spot on the small intestine where indicated. Again, I'll suture it all into place. The new smaller stomach pouch was created, everything has been reattached, and we checked for any leaks in the sutures. This new configuration allows our patient to feel full sooner when eating, but also lets the fluids from their original stomach aid in the digestive process. I'll need you to remove each of the laparoscopic instruments and trocars.
Now we need to suture each of the incisions. Nice work. I bet that won't even leave a scar. Now our patient goes off to recovery. In most cases, they'll spend a few days here in the hospital so we can monitor their progress. Afterward, our patient will meet with her doctor and a nutritional specialist. They will assist her with her new lifestyle and eating habits. You've been a great help. Why not try another fantastic surgery at SurgerySquad.com?